What's up, everybody? This is Building a Stock Market Tracker with React.js Part 7. All right, so in the last episode, we left off with a couple of problems hanging over our heads. So the first one that we talked about, the very last one we talked about, was this problem with dates. So I was expecting to be able to access the 10th, which, which would have been Friday. Um, so this would be 2020. April the 10th I was expecting to be able to get that but it blows up and we established that that's because that was actually Good Friday so the fin financial markets were closed so what we're gonna do for now is hard code the night um, for this uh, particular development and if you want to be able to follow along exactly in the future with this particular code that I'm doing here what you should be able to do is copy this ampersand exact date blah 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 paste it right here after the the chart last equals one if you paste it right there and then you set this to 13 then you're effectively hard coding everything um, but that's not what I'm gonna do for myself because it actually is the 13th and I don't want to forget about it um, so if you want to follow along exactly do that in the next episode after this one, probably, um, we're going to have to figure out how to account for weekends and days when the markets are closed. Um, so that'll be in the next one. But in this one, what I want to go ahead and do is just hard code this and then get our, our data showing up here the way that we want. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so as you can see, um, right here, let's look at stock row JS. So just to, as a refresher, so we're calling in for the latest price, then we're calling this dot apply data, which we probably need to rename because now we're going to end up applying data multiple times, but I digress. Um, so we call apply data right now. We're just console dot logging out the data. Then we're calling this dot set state and then get yesterday's close. Um, so you can see here that we're logging out again get yesterday's close the data and we're successfully getting all the data so if you look here we can see that you know I'm assuming that you know we don't we actually don't have the ticker in here in this data so we don't see exactly whose is what but I think we can kind of guess you know 12 11 uh, is probably Google up to 12 16 today so what we want to do is actually set up something to calculate the dollar change first of all and then we just want to apply that data so essentially all we're going to need to do is inside of here inside of this callback um, what we're going to want to do is say like this dot set state and then we need to say dollar change and then we need to like calculate the dollar change right so in order to do that, first of all, I'm just going to change this variable name to yesterday to make it a little bit more clear. I'm going to widen this out a little bit more. Okay. So what I want to do is say basically uh, data.price. In actual fact, uh, yeah, so data.price minus yesterday dot price now that's a confusing that is actually a very confusing thing because that yesterday's price that should really we would really rather that say close probably um, I'm gonna make a note of that Okay, so you can see here though that we, we see the amount changed. And let's go ahead and console log uh, the console log yesterday too. Console.log yesterday. I want to make sure that I'm seeing that right. And let's let's actually console.log uh, this.props.ticker. Does that work like that? Yeah, so uh, here we got Tesla at 572, and here we got Tesla at uh, 651.30. So it looks like literally everybody went up, so that's correct that it's all green. I need to find an example of somebody who went 
down before we jump up uh, to verify that it's working. So obviously we need to round these numbers because that's ridiculous. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I think what we want to do here is basically like uh, math dot round. Did I think of precision? Let me check. So it looks like what I actually ought to do is dot two fixed and then pass in the number that I want. Okay, yes, that looks good. And while I'm here, let's make that two fixed because Tesla is rounding to a strange number. It's not strange, it's just cutting off the cents, which looks strange. Okay, so now we've got our change in price showing. That's cool. Okay, so now we want to do a percent change. And percent change is actually going to be this. So let's go ahead and move up dollar chains const dollar change equals that. Okay. And then dollar change. And then percent change should be dollar change divided by yesterday dot price, if I'm thinking about this right. So let's see what that does. And of course we can't read that at all. So let's first of all do our same trick here. Dot two fixed two. You know, an actual fact, let's make that one. And then down here, let's go ahead and can I do like N and BSP? Okay, so yeah, that spaces those out. Okay, that is not correct. All right, so I missed in here, I need to do 100 times that because right now it's actually decimal format and so you can see Tesla is the only thing showing up because it went up by over 10% today looks like um, so if we do a hundred times that we should get yeah there we go so now you got a 2% increase on Apple Google is a 0 0.4 so on and so forth so let's spot check a couple of these really quick so um, let's go over here and let's just do a quick search on Apple so here we've got Google telling us it went up by 5.26 and they're telling us it went up by 1.96%. So you know, why don't we do two? Looks like Apple's doing two. So we can actually um, see if we get the 1.9. We got 1.95. So our numbers are off slightly. Um, so, but it's at least telling us it's the same story here. Let's check Goog. All right, so we got six, $6.11 or half a percent. Um, I got $5.32 and 0.44, so that's a significant difference. Um, MSFT, let's check that one. Um, 165.51, so 165.49 changed by 0 0.21, 0 0.22. So this, the data is close. Um, there may be some discrepancies somewhere um, in how this is uh, coming in, but it's close. Um, so the last thing I want to do here is fix our formatting and then play with some negative numbers a little bit if we can find some. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this space there because I don't want to do that here. Um, so there's a couple of things I don't like about this code. There's a lot of stuff I don't like about this code right now, if I'm being honest. But that's fine. We'll come back and we'll do a more serious refactoring. Um, but I just want to point out that right now I really don't like the presentation being blended with the logic in this manner. Um, so, well, this is like a very minor change. We're going to refactor much further than this. but. I'm going to still go ahead and bump this up there just to kind of separate out that, okay, this is like logical stuff. And then here I'm going to do percent change. 
Okay, so, but down here, I'm gonna go ahead and, so I'm gonna put uh, quotes, a dollar sign, and then I want to wrap this and see if I can get that to work. Nope, that doesn't do what I want. Why not? It's because I'm not in JSX. I want this to be um, back ticks like that. And then I need, uh, whoa, what happened there? What in the world? Where did I go? There we go. Question is, why is that printing a dollar sign? Does that work like that? Dollar change. What happens if I put another dollar sign right here? Oh, I see it now. Okay. I was looking at this number, expecting something different to happen, confusing the crap out of myself. Okay, so then here, what I need to do, same kind of deal. Um, and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put a space baked in right there so that it goes ahead and spaces it out. I'm gonna put parentheses around this thing and then put a percent sign at the end. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there it goes, it was just slow. So what I would like to do, so let's find a, let's find a negative one really quick and work on this presentation just a little bit. Okay, so let's try to wrap this up. I feel like I'm dragging these out a little bit longer than I should, but so I'm gonna put one at the top-ish and it's gonna be Grubhub. Grubhub apparently went down today. Yeah, so you can see here that Grubhub is minus $5.43 or minus 12%. And again, let's just check over there. Spot check that. So minus 541, minus 12%, close. So what this tells us is there's a little bit of discrepancy in the data, but our math is right. And so that's what we want to see. That's fine. We'll worry about the data quality later. We're using the free API and we're using it in a way that it's not really meant to be used. Um, so let's go ahead and change this because we want this to be red if it's negative, right? So let's fix that. So there's a lot of ways we could probably do this and I'm a little bit new to React. So I'm going to make something up here that I think makes sense. Um, that's the red that I want to use. So what we want to do is basically say in this styles, if, uh, if it's negative, put the red. If it's positive, put the green. Okay, simple enough. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think we'll be able to do anything logical outside of outside of here. So what I'm gonna do is actually bump this thing down into our, our actual component so that we can make use of state. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this, I'm gonna, so if I save that, it's gonna break. Um, and so what I need to do actually is down here call this as an actual function and I still don't think it's going to work because I need to actually return an object like that change style is not defined style equals change okay I need to call this dot change style so now that's what we want so in here um, what I can do is just say well, well we can say if this dot state dot uh, 
let's say dollar change is greater than zero. And then we can just say uh, const color equals this. This code, I feel like I'm going to have to do some pretty serious refactoring on later. So we're going to say else const color equals, and then I'm going to get the thing that I brought in up here. Okay, and then down here I'm just going to set color to color. And let's see what that does. Um, color is not defined. Okay, so I'm going to say const color, uh, maybe. I think I'm still going to get an issue now. Um, there we go. Now we're talking. So all this is a little bit bothersome. I, this may be a little bit too fancy, but I prefer to do something like this and then a ternary thing. And then we want to just put that here. And then that here. Let's get rid of all this crap. And we're still in good shape. So, I mean, as you can tell, it's actually been a fair bit of work to get to this point. Um, there's a little bit more work to do on just this box, right? Um, just getting all the data pulling in and getting this styled a little bit better. Um, we still need to deal with the rather challenging issue of dealing with this date right here. So there's a couple of things that I want to do in the next couple of episodes. And, you know, I'm trying my best to build this like a real project. So I hope that you're enjoying that. Let me know um, if you are. It'd be great for me to know that. But um, what I'm going to do is probably in the next couple of episodes do a pretty big refactoring session and fix this date thing. Um, so I'm going to have to do some research on my own own time to figure out how to crap to fix that date. I assume we're going to have to integrate with some kind of API or something that pulls back a list of bank holidays or something to that effect or or whatever and then build out a loop that goes back and says okay if the previous day would the bank was or the the financial markets were shut go to the day before and see if the financial markets were shut on that day and just go backwards until you find the previous day that was open. It's probably not that complicated if you find the right API. If you don't find the right API, I don't know how you do that off the top of my head, but I'm sure that that exists, so we'll find it. Um, but anyway, that's that. That's it for this episode. Um, we're making some interesting progress here. Um, yeah, so if you like this, definitely subscribe and uh, keep up to date with what's going on. But I will talk to you in the next episode.